Baron and Lucian returned in mortal form to Middle-earth and came back to Doriath, where Lucian healed the grief that had come over her father. But Melian knew that a far greater parting was to come between her and her daughter, and she turned away in sorrow. Baird and Luthien then went forth to the southeast, settling in the green land of Ossirians, and they gave birth to their son, Dior, who became Thingol's heir. Baron never spoke again with a mortal man, and no one saw Baron and Luthien leave the world or knew where their bodies were laid. But during this time, Mithros is feeling encouraged, because he hears about what Baron and Luthien did, and he thinks that maybe Morgoth isn't so invincible as he claims. But he knows that Morgoth will easily pick them off one by one, so he endeavors to unite all of the Noldor for a concentrated assault. But because of that pesky oath and all the garbage it had caused, there wasn't as much union as there could have been. Orodreth refused to help any son of Feanor, thanks to those jerks Kelgorm and Curifin, so only a small group went out against his will, led by a prince named Gwyndor, who wanted vengeance for his brother. Now, you didn't get much help from Doriath either, because Thingol didn't appreciate the passive-aggressive messages that Feanor's son sent regarding the Silmaril he now possessed, and he was not eager to give up something that his son-in-law and his daughter had been through so much grief to attain. My throws just went with it, but Caligorm and Curifin openly vowed to kill Thingol and take the Silmaril if they came back victorious from the upcoming battle. So Thingol fortified his realm, and the only warriors that came were Mablog and Beleg, and Thingol only allowed them to go if they didn't serve the sons of Feanor, so they joined in with Fingon's people. The dwarves came to help, though, as well as Easterlings, who had sworn allegiance to Mithros. Fingon and his elves also came, along with men from the houses of Hador and Halith, and tidings came to Turgon and Gondolin as well. But Morgoth soon heard of their plans, and he sent many spies among the armies of his enemies to do their dirty work. Mithros' plan was to attack from the east and west and draw out Morgoth's forces, at which point Fingon would come in and they would catch the armies between them. So the day comes, and the sons of Feanor march on Angband. And as Fingon looks down from where he and all his hosts are stationed, he sees black smoke rising from the mountains of Thangorodrum, and he knows that the challenge has been accepted. He's feeling a little uneasy, even though he doesn't know that Mithros hasn't yet made his assault thanks to the lies of the treacherous men of Morgoth, but suddenly, out of the mountains, comes Turgon with an army 10,000 strong from Gondolin, and everyone's hearts are lifted. Now Morgoth endeavors to draw out the host of Fingon early and prevent them from joining with Mithros, who is still delayed by his spies. So he sends out a seemingly great force of orcs that's really a fraction of his true power, and they march towards where Fingon is. The Noldor are starting to get a little antsy, and they want to go attack the orcs, but Hurin is like, not yet guys, you know how tricky Morgoth is. So even as time wears on, and Mithros doesn't get the signal, and the orcs keep on jeering, and the elves get really impatient, Hurin convinces them to wait. At last, however, riders of Morgoth come forth with a hostage, an elf named Gelmir who had been captured in the Battle of Sudden Flame years ago. They had blinded him, and in the sight of all the elves, they cut off his hands and feet, threatening to do the same to the many other captives they had back at Angband. Now, it just so happened that Gelmir was the brother of Gwyndor of Nargothrond, and upon seeing this, he absolutely loses it, and he and his company charge, cutting deep into Morgoth's host. Now the Noldor could no longer be held back, and as Fingon sounded his trumpets, all of the Noldor came pouring down out of the hills. Their onslaught was so fierce that they almost gained the upper hand. Gwyndor and his men came all the way to the gate of Angband, but they were trapped there, and all of them were killed except for Gwyndor, who was taken alive. Fingon was unable to reach them because Morgoth at last sent out his full host, and the Noldor were beaten back across the plains. So began the Nirnaeth Arnodiad, the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. Fingon tries to retreat, but orcs surround them, and many of the House of Haleth are killed. But then Turgon comes to the rescue because he had managed to hold back most of his people, and he comes to his brother's side. Then at last, Mythos' armies arrive and help to push back against the orcs, but then Morgoth pulls out all the stops and sends out Glaurung and a bunch more dragons and Balrogs and wolves and all kinds of awfulness. Many of the Easterlings also proved treacherous, and they assaulted Mythos' armies so that now they were being attacked on three sides. All the sons of Feanor were wounded, but they all survived, and fled away to the mountains in the east. The dwarves proved to be the MVPs of the battle because they caused Glaurung to retreat back to Angband, but it wasn't enough to turn the tide of the battle, and they also left as soon as their lord was slain. Now Fingon and Turgon's people, still including the House of Hador, were all that was left. Gothmog, lord of the Balrogs, drove through the battle and ultimately killed Fingon, so the field was lost. But Hurin and Huor and Turgon were still defending the mountain pass, and the forces of Morgoth couldn't make it through. At last, Hurin tells Turgon to flee, since he is the last hope of the Noldor, but Turgon refuses at first. Then Huor also urges him, telling him that from his house would come the salvation of elves and men, and even though they would never meet again, from them a new star would rise. So Turgon finally listened to the brothers, and taking his host and what was left of Fingon's people, he retreated back to Gondolin while the house of Hador made its last stand. Many valiant men fell, including Huor, until at last Hurin stood alone. 
He throws his shield away and grabs an axe and starts hacking at all the orcs around him, and every time he kills one, he shouts, Day shall come again. And after doing this 70 times, he is finally beaten down, and Gothmog ties him up and takes him back to Angband alive. This was the greatest victory of Morgoth, because it was achieved through lies and treachery. Because of the betrayal of the Isolanes, elves were forever against men, except those of three houses of the Adain. But now Fingon's kingdom was no more, and the sons of Fëanor simply wandered like leaves in the wind. A few of the House of Hela survived and returned to their home in Brethel, but the House of Hador was destroyed, and Morgoth sent forth his Easterlings to torment their wives and children and take over their land. Now orcs and wolves wandered freely all throughout Beleriand. Doriath remained protected thanks to the Girdle of Melian, and Nargothrond was still hidden, but Morgoth didn't really care because he didn't know much about them and he didn't think that they were important yet. Many of the elves who had survived fled to Círdan's people in the Havens, but Morgoth sent an army after them, and the Havens were ruined. Some of the elves escaped by sea, however, including Gilgalad, the son of Fingon, and they sailed south to an island a short ways off the coast of Middle-earth, making a refuge for anyone who wished to come. Turgon hears about this, and he again sends messengers to Círdan, asking him to build ships so that they can ask the aid of the Valar, but none of the elves who set out come back, except for one who was saved by Ulmo and cast on the shore far in the northern coast of Middle-earth. His name was Vorinwe, and you'll learn more about him later. So now Morgoth is thinking more and more about Turgon, because he's now High King of the Noldor, and Morgoth still doesn't know where Gondolin is. So he brings Hurin before him and demands to know where Gondolin is, but Hurin just laughs in his face. Then Morgoth is like, You dare to defy me? Sit down and watch all of your loved ones' lives be ruined. And he forces Hurin to see through his eyes. But through it all, Hurin never asked for death or mercy, for himself or his children. Also, at Morgoth's command, the orcs piled up all the bodies of the slain in the midst of the desert in front of Angband. The elves called it the Hoth in Nirnaeth, the Hill of Tears, but grass grew on it, and alone out of the desert, it was green. No creature of Morgoth ever dared walk on the earth under which the valiant soldiers of elves and men had been buried. <laughs>